Kia ora team, my name is Ben and let's go through the cardiac myocyte action potential. So cardiac, heart, myocyte, myo means muscle, site is cell. So an action potential is the message telling a muscle to contract. How is this going to work? First we need to polarise the cell. Polarise, just like north and south pole, making things opposite, or north and south positive negative of a magnet, we need to do this to the cell membrane. So to do this, we have a thing called the ATPase pump, and it requires ATP, so energy, and it actively forces three sodiums outside the cell and pulls two potassium in. So it's pushing them and creating an imbalance. So now we can have more sodium on the outside than the inside, more potassium on the inside than the outside. But, if you look, we've got more positive molecules because sodium is a positive ion and less positive molecules on the inside. So now, on balance, the inside of the cell is negative and the outside's positive. The other thing we have is we've got IK1 channels where potassium can kind of leak out of the cell. We're pulling potassium in, so we get a higher concentration of potassium in the cell so then it's going to want to just leak out. So now we've got even more positive on the outside, so even more negative on the inside. So that is polarization. And if we look at it, cardiac myocyte sits about negative 90 millivolts. And that's where we are right there. Thank you, ATPase pump and IK1 potassium channels. Awesome. Now that we've polarized the cell, made it, positive on the outside, negative on the inside. To send a message, we need that action potential coming. So the neighboring cell will have an action potential running through that, and our cardiac cells are connected by gap junctions. When the neighboring cell depolarizes, we get sodium coming through the gap junction into our cardiac myocyte, and we get calcium coming through that gap junction. So these are two positive ions. So if we look at the graph, in this phase here, if we got positive things entering the cell, we're slowly gonna become less negative. Good, next thing, we're gonna enter phase zero. It's not my party, I didn't name the phases. So phase zero, and this is where we get depolarization. As soon as we hit about negative 70 millivolts, we get fast voltage acted sodium channels open. Here they are sitting here, it's closed. When we hit negative 70, the door's open, it's like a big garage door, and because we've got so much sodium outside the cell, and the inside's negative, opposites attract, we zoom, lots of sodium rushes into the cell. Because sodium's positive, you can see on the graph, we rapidly get more and more positive, and that's depolarization, because now we shoot past neutral and the cell interior becomes positive, up to around 30 millivolts. So this is our phase zero, depolarization. Awesome, now we get to phase one, and once we hit that peak of about 30 millivolts, the membrane becomes positive, and our fast voltage gated sodium channels shut. Their job's done. The door is closed, no more sodium is entering by those voltage gated fast sodium channel. Now, because the inside of the cell is now positive, opposites attract, and we have this negative ion, chloride, it enters. So if we've got negative things entering, it's gonna make the inside of the cell slowly start to get a bit more negative, go in the opposite direction, and we get these transient outward potassium channels opening. And here it is there, so it opens, so now, now potassium leaves the cell. If we've got positive things leaving and negative things coming, we can see in phase one, the cell starts to become less positive and starts to become more neutral. Excellent, that's phase one. Now, we enter phase two, and you see it flattens off. 
in the prolonged plateau, we get voltage-gated L-type calcium channels opening. Here it is here. It's voltage-gated, so it waited for the voltage to hit this level, and then they open. Now we've got calcium coming into the cell. Calcium is positive, so you think it's going to try to start making the cell wall more positive, but at the same time, we've got our potassium channels open. So when we've got positive coming in and positive leaving, it kind of balances itself out, which is why it stays at a plateau. So it's slowly, slowly getting more negative, but pretty much plateauing. And that's our phase two. Then when we get to phase three, we get rapid repolarization. So repolarizing is to make that inside of the cell negative again. How's that happen? Our voltage-gated L-type calcium channels close. Once the voltage gets a bit lower, they shut down. Now, this, the doors close, so don't get any more calcium entering. If we're not getting positive things coming in, then we're gonna start getting more negative. As the membrane becomes more negative, we're coming, falling down the slope, we get more potassium channels opening. And here they are here. So IKR and IKS potassium channels. So now we've got all these potassium leaving. If we're losing potassium, which is a positive thing, then the inside of the cell is gonna start becoming more and more negative. We're not getting the calcium to balance it, and we're getting lots more positives leaving. So you see, we drop down and we're fast becoming more negative. So that's our phase three, rapid repolarization. And then phase four is when we come back to that resting potential, which was right at the start here, where the outside was positive and the inside was negative. When we get there, our IKR and IKS potassium channels close. Once we hit about negative 70, the IKRs shut down, and then when we get to negative 90, the IKS shuts down. Those potassium channels, they shut their doors. And so now we're left how we were back at the start with our ATPase sodium potassium pump just cranking through, using energy to get sodium out, pull potassium in, and a little bit of the potassium leaking out. And that's gonna stabilize the resting potential back at negative 90 millivolts. And now it's waiting until it gets another message from a neighboring cell through the gap junction with sodium and calcium coming in to begin the process again. So that, is your cardiac myocyte action potential. Whew. Holy cow. All right, team, so we've talked about the action potential, which is the message saying to the muscle to contract. When we went into phase zero, because the message came through the gap junction to contract, we had this rapid depolarization and then once we hit our 30 and we entered one, the membrane became positive and sodium gates closed, chloride enters and our potassium channels open. Then when we hit two, we get our prolonged plateau. And this is where the magic happens because we get our L-type calcium channels opening. The reason calcium is so important is because we need calcium for a muscle to contract. With muscles, we've got a skinny filament called actin and a big, strong myosin head. Myosin binds to actin and pulls, and that's how a muscle contracts. Problem is, we can't have that all the time, so we have a molecule called tropomyosin that covers up the binding sites on actin and troponin, which holds it there. So this is what's happening most of the time. When calcium comes in, in phase two, 
When that calcium rushes in, calcium binds to troponin, pulls tropomyosin out of the way, and so actin and myosin can now bind, and this is when the muscle is contracting. So that contraction can keep going until then we lose calcium. It then falls off troponin, tropomyosin drops in front of our actin binding sites, and now the muscle's at rest. So that is why in phase two, it's so important for calcium to enter the cell. Heavy studying. Okay.